Hello friends, it's Techman Pat. Let's get straight into it. A relationship like no other. One that you would think is a match made in heaven, like Vegemite and toast, or even maybe shrimp on the barbie. Whatever your preference, you have to agree, fast wireless intern would go great with a service that provides on-demand entertainment, such as Netflix or YouTube. And back in 2015, Netflix was gearing up to go live in Australia, and what happened next will shock you more at six. <laughs> in today's update, we're going to look over what the Netflix effect is and how it's crippled the wireless NBN. And of course, the news this week that NBN Co. will refinance their loan with the government. Also, stay tuned for some really great deals on loans to build your own national broadband network. Look, in 2016, the government gave NBN Co. a loan of $19.5 billion. And to date, NBN Co. has drawn down around 12 billion, only because the network builder was unable to raise any funds from elsewhere. They went back to the bank of mum and dad, as we all do, and all in all, the taxpayer representative, aka the coalition, was more than happy to throw money at NBN Co. And I suppose the big news is that the government has allowed NBN Co. to refinance the loan at an unknown date for some reason. So here is the kicker. The Australian Audit Agency has blasted the government for not undertaking any studies or reports of NBN Co's financial or future financial positions to see if they could pay it back in any shape or form. There has been studies that fast internet will boost the Australian economy, but those figures are as thin as tr Donald Trump's hair. It is unlikely that the coalition will make back any losses on the loan and will probably write it off as we discussed last week. However, a project like this is never going to go on budget. The sheer scale of it makes it difficult to plan out and the size of our country is not helpful at all. This is why many countries, for example in Europe and even New Zealand, have been able to roll out fast internet from each paddock to each sheep. It's not to say it is impossible. To me it seems like the project was undertaken by people who were not skilled, educated, nor had any understanding or even past experiences in what a great or even reasonably good internet service should look like. Now, there aren't many people that might even fit that job description, but the amount of money involved kind of should have invited or tempted some sort of good people, or at least talented people, I hope. I, look, I can only imagine what the selection criteria was like. Oh yeah, Bob, he's uh, great. He can hit like 12 pints at the bar and manage to get my tax down to zero with my 10 properties in Sydney. So nah, yeah, he's, he's good with project management, a multi-billion dollar digital infrastructure project around the country to service 27 million people. Yeah, if, if you want to get in touch with him, here's his address. Yeah, send him a letter. He doesn't really know how to use email. Bad jokes aside, there needs to be a bit of a shakeup with how the NBN is run, especially now with the refinancing and new government. What, what do you guys think? Could there be a people change that could bring about actual change? I know we talked about the NBN uh, co-board actually getting fired completely or removed, but that hasn't happened. The same people are still running the same show. So Netflix has been in the news quite a lot. And so has NBN Co for that matter. But one thing that many forget is what happened when Netflix arrived in Australia. Because the pain and suffering for those on wireless NBN was overshadowed by everyone cutting the cord from Foxtel, or at least, you know, enjoying the latest Netflix shows. The promise of wireless NBN for regional and remote customers was a dream come true. The potential to access fast broadband services, where in some cases had no service at all, was absolutely exciting. Now, 7% of all NBN connections were going to be wireless. 7% is actually a lot of people when you think about it. It's also a lot of businesses that could now be part of the global network with access to many more potential new customers. But it was not meant to be. Netflix brought about the death of wireless internet in Australia. The sheer bandwidth needed to service everyone who wanted to watch the latest episode of House of Cards back when Kevin Spicy was still spacey and not fiddling about, just too much for the network to handle. Promised by the NBN Co were broken. 100 megabits per second on wireless has never been seen and never will be. These were absolutely broken 
promises. NBN Co has struggled to keep the lights on. The demand was so high that even though they had future-proofed their equipment, apparently it was still not enough. Speed plans were dropped, prices stayed high. Even now the most expensive plan, it's called a 50 down, 20 up, plus cannot guarantee anything near those speeds at the best of times. And most of the time, your upload is like three, five, and the best of downloads, 10, 15 from what I've seen. But then how did NBN Co judge if a service was good enough? Well, I'm glad you asked. The NBN Co instead came up with a test for your fixed wireless connection. Now, if at any point in the day, it can hit 25 megabits per second, you're all good to go. Now, most of the tests, of course, will be done at around 3 a.m. with still, they'll still be staggered throughout the night because, hey, good luck testing all your customers at the same time. In any case, I don't think that happened, but basically, at any point in time, if your internet could match that, then it was all good in their books. Many people are fighting to stay on their ADSL service because of this and because a cable connection is just much more stable and persistent than the sub-bar overburdened wireless that NBN Co has forced on the regional public. Now, NBN's answer? Well, if video streaming didn't exist, you would never run into these problems. So hey, let's tax video streaming because that's so logical and this is the conversation we're gonna have right now. So I hope you guys have checked out that video before. I'll link that in the uh, description below. Please check it out. Let me know what you guys think about that. But you know, if road deaths didn't exist, we would, wouldn't need seat belts in cars. And you know, if the polio disease didn't exist, we wouldn't need to pay for polio vaccines. Honestly, I really feel sorry for residents and businesses who are forced onto wireless NBN without any other options. I think NBN could have prepared better. Part of running a project like this is also looking out for potential problems and doing your due diligence. Netflix went online in 2011 in the US and YouTube has been around since 2005. Do you think NBN Co went in a bit blind? Building a wireless service that was swiftly overloaded by one video platform? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.